Fuck. look, I'm sorry to hear that this has happened to you. Uh, Sent her a few links for like mental health support and then yeah. blocked her because you don't engage, it will continue. And mm. then it was just like bombardments and that of like like different uh, Instagram accounts. Fake and accounts. then when the lockdown uh, come off, the lift come off, um, back to the festival season. And the first festival, I'd heard her voice on the voice note she sent. I didn't know what she looked like. Come off stage, like having a little fag. No. And then I heard her like, can I have some of your cigarette? And I was like, Phew. I was like, it's you. And she just looked unwell, like, don't mean to be rude. And I was like, yeah, you got to stop this. And she was just, like, really giddy, like a child. And I was like, you got to stop this. Like, it's a bit much. And then every single festival, grabbing hold of my driver, grabbing hold of my band, like, threatening them, saying Amy needs to come with me and her dog get in my boot. No. Things like that. Like, and I'm, I started screenshotting all the messages then because it was getting a bit much. And then Shambhala Festival finished. Went home in my yard of my guitarist at like midnight. Smoking a little doobs and that in my front room. And then she, I, I feel something. And then she's there, like, standing in my garden, looking in. And I'm like, I got, like, PTSD, which isn't a forever thing. But, and I, so I got up, like, yo, what the fuck? Like, yeah. And she's like, she just stepped in, like, oh, hey, um, you told me to come here. You, you called my name on stage. Like, this is a great adventure. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official <laughs> Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we're here to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast, live and direct, central London, or central as you need to be, choose to be, could be, desire to be, don't want to be anywhere else. What the hell would you want to, what were you even thinking? <laughs> Reach out to everybody, sharers and carers. People that have been spotted from the jump. Um, so if you're right, we're giving you nothing but the hottest, and uh, the hottest is here. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hodder Wars Summer 2024. Um, ever increasing and flourishing career of this lady's multi talented, versatile in emceeing and singing and all cross genres. It's just incredible to even get her in because she's so busy working on new projects. UK Hip Hop's fine. And it's Amy True in the building. Love my brother. Thank you for having me, Killer. It is. You're so busy. Yeah, man. And I've just had, uh, like, the last two years, I made it public. I had a stalker as well, which was kind of mad. Whoa, yeah. breaks, 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 breaks. <laughs> controversy, controversy, spicy, spicy. Hell on earth. What, yeah. what happened? So lockdown, yeah. yeah. And then lockdown, uh, it's total stranger. Yeah. Um, a lady from Scotland. I know they brought out that bloody thing on shit flicks. Oh, yeah. That bloody whatever oh. thing. It, like, I didn't sleep with her. It wasn't like that. I didn't know her, innit? Like, reindeer, baby reindeer. <laughs> Baby reindeer, eh? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So during lockdown, you know, everyone was pranging out about health. And online, I was, like, telling people about chaga mushroom uh, and da-da-da-da. And, like, she contacted me for that, like, as a few people did. And I'm okay. like, yeah, try it out. It's good for you. Magnesium, zinc, build up your immune system. And then, like, brrr, messages like this. And obviously, no disrespect to anyone who suffers from, you know, mental illness or whatever. Right. I was like, this is a bit much, you know. Wow. She's like, yeah, I've been sex trafficked. And then this happened and then that happened. And oh, wow. all these different kind of intertwining things that go off. And I was oh. like, look, I'm sorry to hear that this has happened to you. Sent yeah. her a few links for, like, mental health support. And then yeah. blocked her because you don't engage. It will continue. And mm. then it was just, like, bombardments and that of, like, like different uh, Instagram accounts. Fake and accounts. then. When the lockdown uh, come off, the lift come off, um, back to the festival season. And the first festival, I'd heard her voice on the voice note she sent. I didn't know what she looked like. Come off stage, like having a little fag. No. And then I heard her like, can I have some of your cigarette? And I was like, Phew. I was like, it's you. And she just looked unwell, like don't mean to be rude. And I was like, yeah, you got to stop this. And she was just like really giddy like a child, and I was like, you got to stop this, like, it's a bit much. And then every single festival, grabbing hold of my driver, grabbing hold of my band, like, threatening them, saying Amy needs to come with me and her dog get in my boot. No. Things like that. Like, and I, I started screenshotting all the messages then because it was getting a bit much. And then Shambhala Festival finished, went home in my yard of my guitarist at like midnight, smoking a little doobs and that in my front room. And then she, I, I feel something, and then she's there, like, standing in my garden looking in, and I'm like... I got like PTSD, which isn't a forever thing, but and I, so I got up like, yo, what the fuck? Like, yeah. and she's like, she just stepped in like, oh hey, um, you told me to come here, you you called my name on stage, like this is a great adventure, and I'm like, nah man, don't don't. I, I got like, I was like, you need to get out, and my guitarist come, 
Like, I called mental health support and they said, you need to call the police and that in, in Scotland and in London. And then, like, it didn't stop. And then she threatened me, like, yeah, you sh you, I had to call the police. She's like, shouldn't have called the police. Threatening to break my guitarist's fingers, calling my family, running a smear campaign, going to other gigs. It was a nightmare, leaving dead animals in my garden on full what? moons. My neighbours are like, this woman's watching you sleep. So that was mad. That went on for two years and the police were not very good about two it. Two years. Two years. It's like she's on remand now. And it's been like hell on earth. I had to come out of uni because it was just so distracting. She'd like message diplomats of sound and say, yeah, um, this lady's kicked a baby out of my stomach or message someone else and go, I dated Amy and she dumped me for someone else. Like all different kinds of stories. So what? she'd see if I was dating someone, if I showed it on my story... Then she messaged the person I was dating, threatening her like violently, and it was absolutely mad. How did you keep that together? I didn't. I had a I had a wee after the two years, and like my dog died as well. She was feeding my dog. Yeah, but honestly, man, mad. Absolute nutterism. Yeah, and I wish her well, far away from me, but um, I don't know her, and she's just really obsessed and fixated. I made it public last year because it was getting out of control. And some people who follow me in Scotland, they were like, we know this lady. And she's done this before quite a few times to other artists, but her dad mm. is apparently high up with festivals or knows the feds in Scotland and she keeps kind of getting off of it. Really? And I'm like, nah, man, destructive as hell. For your creative flow, for everything. It everything. just blocked. Yeah, Prohibits man. you from doing all the things that... Because in the back of your mind, you're thinking... Well, it's every... It was every day from, like, midnight till, I don't know, maybe she slept two hours a day, like, constantly on the phone, on the emails. I have to, like, check my story and, like, block all the time and... Honestly, man, man, proper shite. It's insane. Yeah. So I did. I had a, I had a wee little breakdown, like, last year, winter, because we lost Benjamin Zephaniah as well. Yeah, for sure. And, like, a few other... Coming out of uni, that bothered me. Yeah. I was smashing it at uni. Yeah. Like, me and Logic joined ACM uh, uni. Uh, big up, Logic. Yeah, big up, Logic. Salute the generali. Yep. And, uh, yeah, doing really well. So I had to come out because it was just too distracting and too, like, disruptive to my life. Um... And I didn't want to really talk about it. When mm. I said it to people, like, oh, what? You got a stalker? Whoa, like, you know, like, no. some of my mates like, why don't you sleep with her and that? I'm like, what the hell? You're making uh, jokes because it's, yeah. it's funny to people. Like, it's because really not, not funny. Yeah, 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 they're not taking it seriously. Um, yeah, it, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. So, uh, yeah, socially, everything. So you could be with a whole group of people and then and you just see her from afar. Just like, well, she, she kept coming to my house. She'd come to my house up four times that I know of. She actually was living in her car around the street from me. We found out she had all her things in her car. And then my guitarist was there. He was like, uh, we was wondering why my dog kept going missing. And even when she broke in the first time, my dog didn't make a sound. She was feeding him. Wow. I don't know what she was feeding him. But yeah, like it was, it was not good. Wow. Like I was, just, yeah, quite triggered by that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's, it's, podcasts are an amazing thing. You see, is, yeah, it, it, these stories, anything can go anywhere. You just, just have no idea. I had no preconceived idea that this yeah. was. Yeah, I was kind of, I was kind of embarrassed about it. Like that, I, that it shook me. To be honest with you, like you know, I, the, the things that I do, the things I stand up for, mm. but um, the way the police were dealing with it, they were like, oh well. They were just like, you know, you're all right. And I being was police, like, basically. yeah, just being whack. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm like, they're like, you're not scared. Look at the way you're standing. But I'm like, this is what, if you're, if you've got PTSD and you're like this, cause you feel attacked, like yeah. they take that as like aggression. They're like, look at you. And I'm just like, no, I need you to get this middle-aged white woman yeah. away from me. Like, even if I, you know, like pushed her off me, I'd be in jail before you know it. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's like, how do you handle this? You've got to handle it with care because, yeah, because also I'd, they're mentally disturbed exactly. as well. So they can pull that card out. Yeah, I would never want to hurt anyone. Um, but yeah, it's and also when she gets out, which she will, mm. I've got to figure out a way of my safety. So I've got to get like cameras in my yard and things like that. They've asked me to move, but like... She's in at the moment. She's in at the moment. It's going to court, actually, the end of this month. She pled guilty because there were so many artists that had actually uh, given statements for her contacting them and giving different stories about me and the festivals and diplomats and chai. Like, they've all kind of given evidence of when she's messaged them. They've got the screenshots, all the voice notes of her saying all these kind of ridiculous stories. A smear campaign, basically. Yeah. It's like, she's like, you've taken my um, career 
or you're supposed to be with me, things like that, and threatening behaviour, and yeah, man. Man, this would have kind of completed your university course. This could have been a project. <laughs> but do you know what, thing. as well, from lockdown and people being, like, directed to their phone, it's like people have become more obsessed with people online. I believe so. Yeah, and this is something that I think needs to be spoken about. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also just general obsession. Um, yeah. It's very habitual, you know, to, to, to check your phone, 20 minutes, yeah. next thing. Whoa, what, what am I doing? Yeah, <laughs> Un unhealthy attachments, isn't it? Like, yeah. you know? But um, yeah, I'm I'm feeling a lot better now. She's away from me, you know, mm. and uh, I've done a lot of work on myself as I always do. I'm really proud of you, man. Yeah, man. You're even coming on podcasts and talking about that shit. It's like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't normally it. like doing interviews, like, but um, no, I, I've, I know. Speaking of podcasts, can we yeah, tell with me? you? You know, <laughs> we're from like a similar ends, isn't yes. it? We're both from Sussex Hotel. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Crawley. Yeah. But um, no, nah, so I just want to finish my album. That's yeah. all I want to do. So with the festivals and whatnot, they mm. were like, take this. This year off Amy mm. and finish your album and like do what you do you know I've, I'm doing a project for women with endometriosis because oh, wow. yeah I've suffered from severe endometriosis but I've found ways to talk about that talk about endometriosis endometriosis is where the lining of your womb grows outside of your womb and it attaches itself like the tissue attaches itself to like your organs oh. so say when a woman's on her period um, it contracts it's painful That's so now be... it's contracting everywhere yeah it's all it's I've, I haven't had a baby Baby, but I've heard it's like contractions of having a baby and it's you're just incapable of moving for like at least a few days some women are different wow. the pain is excruciating and what they offer you is to take your womb out which I don't agree with your no. womb is your your portal your yeah. magic portal and even when women have had a hysterectomy it doesn't actually get rid of it so I'm actually calling on a lot of women who want to share their experience. You can contact me and healers as well. We're looking at ancient remedies. We're looking at like indigenous remedies, like new new age remedies and just other alternatives wow. to help like lessen cysts, fibroids and endometriosis. And yeah. Wow, that's Importante. amazing. It is important. Um, yeah. Big up Kenny Thomas, the singer. Um, uh, he he uh, helped his daughter get through cancer using, you know, herbalistic remedies. Yeah. And they are out there. A lot of, you know, there's obviously a lot of tape and, you know, leaps and hoops to jump and yeah. spin through. But um, the majority of the time is you, you get in what you put out. Yeah. And the more emphasis, the more focus, the more deep dive you get. Yeah. And, you know, when you get into the realms of certain areas of the internet, which actually are designed to help support people you know herbalistically you know mm. it's actually quite hard to to get in to crack that 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 nut you yeah. know and get into those spaces yeah 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 it? i hear you and but the, we're in the age of information mm. as you know you know that we're being bombarded with mm. information we're living in an amazing time obviously mm. the things that are happening in the world are diabolical right mm. now but the access to information and the people sharing this is amazing so mm. it's good to put it out there and enlighten other women like it's a very big topic mm. and more women are suffering for it uh, suffering from it like within the last 10 years as well so mm. yeah man mm. where, where do you get this energy this is um energy for life and love like you're a, we've met <laughs> you're so loving you're you're so lovely do you know what yeah, I mean? You, you, you really... I care. Your energy, you care. Do you know what I mean? Taurus, innit? Always. Taurus, Scorpio. Yo. Yeah, I am a big nurturer. And even back in the day in Crawley, like, my yard was the yard... Like, when I lived in a hostel and that, and then you get your flat, um, it was a bit more easier then as well, like, you know. But um, anyway, if my house was the house where everyone would come mm. and, like get on the mic and it would be the neutral space mm. for everyone to come and spit bars because there wasn't really many places in Crawley for that. Mm. And I was it was always like big mama's house in a way mm. kind of thing. But um, yeah, it's just who I am, isn't it? Like my mum's always like, why do you always care about these worldly things? Just go and like make loads of money and that like, we're waiting for you to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Classic like, parent behaviour. <laughs> I'm rich inside. Yeah, 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 man. Obviously love my parents and that, but um, it's just who I am. Like, even so that's kind of how the workshop started. So I would I would like I used to grow a bit of weed back in the day and then mm -hmm. I would use that money to buy my equipment for the people to come to the studio, make small documentaries. And then Arts Council saw what I was doing and they were like, Yeah, maybe you can apply for funding and then I started doing workshops in London. Um, true stories, mm -hmm. how mainstream media like programs you for fear, Islamophobia, mm -hmm. who owns the federal banking yeah. system. 
stuff like that. My and algorithms are going up and down. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then I'd get guests on, so guest speakers like who work for like Russia Today or The Guardian, mm. like friends I know, to teach young people how to research before they come out of all these conspiracy theories, which, yeah, you know, can yeah. be... I don't really like that word. It was in, it created by the mm. CIA, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're like, what? We're really allowed to talk about this? And I'm like, yeah, talk about whatever you want. Like, you're your own journalist. Mm. And then we'll make that into a rap, put on an event. Um, I did one with Loki, like, for human rights, when it was the 50th anniversary wow. of human rights, just before lockdown. Big up Loki. Which is, yeah, big up Loki. Um, yeah, like, Chester P's come through. I had the mm. Ezra Collective on the True Minds workshops. I did one as well um, for how artists can stay well um, mm. from depression and stuff like that. So we took people on like 5K runs, ice baths, meditation with Michele Amin, who does Cesar Rojo. Um, I just like, I see, I see issues and it's like, how can we find solutions to it, you know? And how can we discuss Whoa. these um, topics and, and create art from it as well? Like, yeah. Yeah, man. There's not many people like you out there. Well, there's there's a few, but yeah. Nah, it's more about the communication of it. It's the conveying of information. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's not enough people that are able to. Thank you. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I'll take it. I'll yeah, say thank real. you. Yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. Please do, because you, you know, the, the, what you're talking about is finding um, problem solution as opposed to just pointing at the problem and throwing a thing up on Instagram. Yeah, so, that's just, so and these good. are different. These are different solutions compared to what the problem is faced with. Yeah. You know, like running or whatever. You know, just taking advantage of of your creative stance on things. Yeah, 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 exactly. And um, I just, I believe that um, we all have a skill. Mm. Every single person has something to bring to the table and no one is like, you know, obsolete. Like, everyone's needed. Mm. Like, yeah, man. Let's talk about skills for a second here. Skills, 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 skills. skills. Uh, she was beatboxing just before I started pressing record, you understand? Um, yeah, I like to bring the best out in people. Uh, but um, when it comes to lyrics, when it comes to your voice, oh man, like, that versatility is almost, you know, certified, you know, yeah. in instant win. Yeah. Job done. I'm quite adaptable. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Um, who are your inspirations, MC-wise? Let's, let's start uh, there. Growing up was like, I, I love Tupac, yeah, yeah you know, Crawley. They're like, oh, bloody, you know, race, race is so Crawley and that. But like, I loved Tupac. I loved the passion and I loved the revolutionary side of where he was coming from, but... What helped me to kind of grow up when I was younger was listening to more like Common, mm. a Talib Kweli. Mm. Um, yeah, with music, I listened to a lot of Mary J and Jodeci, mm. showing my age oh, now. Hold on, uh, Jodeci, uh, Jodeci, yeah. Jodeci, Jodeci, Jodeci. Yeah, man. Uh, so, because I got a husky voice, mm. so like Jodeci, Mary J, Blige, and Brandy, Jill Scott. Nice. Like, I really love that. Mm, yeah, Jill man. Jill Scott. Yeah, but yeah. never trying to emulate anyone. Always trying to be myself. You know, yeah. everyone's always trying to sing like Erica Badu. It gets boring and that. <laughs> you know I mean? like find your voice. <laughs> but at the same time, and, and I'll go so far as when people like Estelle carved a great path. Yeah, she did. Do you know what I'm she saying? She did. She really did. They didn't really know what to do with a uh, black British artist back in the At day. All. Like, they didn't have a clue. <laughs> it was only until we kind of started doing our own things or. Yeah. Yeah, like independently, we Got had to big up this stealth for that man. Hundred like. percent, she's amazing. She's yeah. an amazing artist. Because there are some others that come to mind. Nineteen eighty, yeah, like Nas, obviously Nas, yeah. as well. UK artists, obviously yeah. like Logic, Skinny Man, people like that from back come in the on. day. Toot, Jess, toot. Yeah. Chester P. I yeah. love Chester, Chester P's poetry. Is absolutely amazing. Hell yeah, yeah. But but then you, you just inspire your like you know what goes on in life and yeah. what's inside you as an individual when your perspective of things is, you know, yeah, that's everything. Is important, yeah. And the climate in the UK is of a different to the rest of, or was. Maybe it's a little bit more like in tune with a lot of what's going on in the world now. Uh, the UK has some great, great musicians, great poets, uh, pioneers of yeah. like different, like, you know, genres. Yeah. It's amazing. The UK is doing great. It's I think great, we're right? making a lot of noise right now. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Drill music, drill music. I like the beats, you mm. know. I understand that people are spitting aggy over it because there's so many issues going mm. on with the world. Everyone needs to express themselves. Mm. But, uh, yeah, like beat-wise, I always loved, like, Pharrell's beats. Ooh. I really love yeah, that. that whole that, MTV era, yeah, 2006 nerd. to 2009, sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a great era. I love it. I love jazz. I love drum and bass. I love rock. Yeah. I like Metallica. Oh. I'm open-minded, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, imagine, like, a jazz metal band. That'd be... 
Fucking yeah. hell. I was thinking about Hardcore, this the other day. Mate. So drum and bass has taken a, rena- got, you know, got a renaissance, right? Yes. It's doing its thing. Yeah. So it's only a matter of time because Limp Bizkit's just doing its thing. It's all suddenly popping off all over again. What, is he doing a thing again? Limp Bizkit's Limp Bizkit getting back out there, that's for sure. Yeah. Right? And it's only a matter of time before drum and bass makes that transition to American rock. Yes, for real. Just for a matter real. of time. Yeah, yeah, for real. And big up Congo Natty as well on oh, the Jungle Tip. Big up Congo He's Natty. on that album. Man, yeah, the UK scene is incredible, isn't it? It is, it is. Yeah. There's a lot of amazing artists here. And I think it's like, yeah, we're just always evolving. And, and you're, always, you're always really well... I mean, I've heard you on drum and bass tracks... I've heard you across the board, like, you're, you're happy to put your vocal to absolutely anything, aren't Yeah, you? my foundation is always, like, hip-hop and soul. Mm. That's my foundation. But, again, I'm adaptable, and I don't believe that you should... Being independent means do what you want to do, innit? Mm. That's the whole point of being independent. You don't have to keep yourself in a, in mm. a box. I know there's, like, the purest and that. They want to stay boom-bap, and I absolutely love that. Mm. But I am, I'm very versatile. So live your life, man. Be happy, mm. like... What yeah. do you think the hardest... What do you think the hardest... Or more toughest issue is in the UK right now. In regards to music. In regards to because the music, you're the soundtrack. The music is the soundtrack, right? What's the toughest issue, as in for society? Generally, yeah. Like if it could be music, people keep it. taking a vaccine. <laughs> 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 people keep listening to the government and yeah. that. Yeah, like well, I think we should do a lockdown on the government. Mm, don't you think? Like yeah. instead of them doing a lockdown on us and that. Real talk. What's the toughest issue? I just think right now. It's always the same story with humanity. England, mm. the weather, people need to believe in themselves mm. more. Mm. People need to stand in their authenticity more, you know. Uh, yeah, it's just a human thing, isn't it? Mm. But we're all growing and evolving. Like, as I said, we're living in an, amaz- in an amazing time mm. of humanity. Like, even from, like, the 80s of, like, when the internet has come in to, like, fucking social media... Mm. That's a big issue. Mm. People too much stuck to their phones. Mm-hmm. I would say that's a big issue, distracting mm. you from your art form. I am guilty of that mm-hmm. as well. But um, I also like For making real. people laugh. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, found yeah, yeah. I've always liked making people laugh. But during lockdown, when everyone was a bit miserable, I was like, no, nah, i got to turn this up, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just make people laugh and kind of mock. Yeah, yeah, kind of mock what's happening and like bring people out of this. Like, oh, my God, we're all going yeah. to die. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen so many people running in all my life. Yeah, that's mad. <laughs> It is mad. It was good. It's funny to think it even it's like, happened. Shit, yeah. we're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, this is what I was born for. New world order. Oh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> born to die. Not to, well, yeah. yeah, that's part of it. It's true. It's true. It's Can't true. go to heaven without dying. What can we do to stop that ever uh, the sandstorm of? Social media impacting us so deeply. We've got to be self... we got to have self more self-discipline. Yeah. We really do. Because at the end of the day, like, it's tools. But it's yeah. almost like a, it's a, a like a like like an extra arm. Yeah. If someone loses their phone, they're like, ah! Yeah. It's like we're already meshing with AI and that, like... Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's interesting. I'm not against technology. No. Don't get me wrong, yeah? <laughs> it's how we use it and uh, it's a tool. But you just made yeah. me think of something. Because it's kind of the entry hole for addiction. It is, and they know. It's yeah. a psych- It's like even all the social Food, media platforms. Yeah, addiction, drink addiction. Yeah, nicotine. and we all have addiction. Sugar is the worst. Sugar. I just realised I've got more addictions recently because of those sorts. Of, because, and I think it spawns from you on the phone, flicking, flicking. Oh yeah. 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 Well, I'm just gonna go to a pub. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. anything? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But the point being is that it's it's almost like a, a conduit to it. It is. It? Yeah. It is. I feel like. The phone is like, it's just constantly taking your, you know, back in the day, we'd remember each other's numbers and things yeah. like that. Like, we can't, people are like, which way is it? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Like, you used to remember which way to go and shit. Yeah. I don't know. Um, again, it's a tool. Yeah. So self-discipline, self-discipline and focus, which, yeah, yeah, everyone has, I believe, some sort of trauma that they have to deal with and heal throughout their life. I do believe it's part of the journey we're on earth, to mm. be fair. Everyone has shadow shit to go through. Um, nobody has just come into this world like clean and pure Sh- and shadow just... shit. Explain that bit... shadow work, like working on the on the trauma or the issues in your life, or looking at dark parts of your life that you don't want to look at. Mm. You know, like addiction, mm. or just you know not being self aware, or I don't know anything, any any type of negative issue in your life that you don't want to pay attention to. You look at it yeah. and you work on it and you heal it. 
um, spending time alone, uh, maybe doing therapy. I don't believe in staying in therapy. Mm. I believe staying in therapy keeps you in it's victim like mode. It's like antidepressants or whatever, you know. Yeah. You, you don't want to be kind of hanging around. On yeah, it there's, there's so many things. There's so yeah. many things. And yeah, like I myself as well, I was uh, sexually abused in 2016. And for me, like, you know, I was out that night and I was getting, like, drunk and that. I was with my pals and someone put some shit in my drink, someone I know. No way. Um, and for me, I've always been, like, with the lads as well. Yeah. And it, for me, obviously, what happened to me wasn't my fault, but I had to take a step back. Like, I watch my drinks now. I realise, you know, I'm a beautiful woman. Yeah, I'm yeah, hanging around yeah, with guys. Yeah. Like, I needed to, like, you know, check myself as well. Um, and also after that, I did therapy. I didn't want to be like angry at men. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love my brothers. Mm. Like I love my sisters as well. So things like that, any type of trauma, any type of childhood abuse. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, man, heal, heal your shit. A lot of people yeah. need to do that because it comes out into social media, doesn't it? It does. It, it does. It does. Yeah. Projects. People yeah. project their shit. Yeah. But at the same time, no one's perfect here no. in this earthly realm. In this earthly world. In this earthly realm. You're very stoic for <laughs> the things that you, you know, you've got, you go through. Positive and negative up to now. It seems to be it seems like you. I believe in talking about it after I've done a lot of healing. Yeah. I wouldn't want to come out and be like, Bee! Yeah. Like, don't get yeah. me wrong. I've been like, yeah, fucking, I, I say my thing. I say what I need to say. But especially when I, I've done workshops of young people or I put it in my music, I don't want to come across like a moany cow or you have to do the healing so then you can kind of show people the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. You can be an advocate for that. You know, a lot mm. of people make music and they just want to keep you in a depression, yeah. which is, you know, it happens. Yeah. We get depressed, but don't stay there. Yo, that's interesting. You know what? Because I think even when you make your own music, it's you reprinting what you're thinking for you to then listen back to. A hundred. I've left, <laughs> I've left like breadcrumbs for myself yeah. of like information. In fact, I do it a lot. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I just, it's like, oh go back, listen to that, like, oh, yeah, give motivate myself. And then it oh, motivates others I as well. I love that. Yeah, you have to. Because you know when you're hard-headed as well, you don't yeah. listen to no one. Hmm. So you have to leave. <laughs> you have to listen to yourself. We met before. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Real, oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's real, though. And, yeah. um, you know, get your fucking playlist together and just have a banging batch of tracks. In yes. A certain way, innit? Yeah, yeah. And exercising is really important for me, like, to pull myself out of certain things or depression, mm. like... And I'm just so active. Like, my dad's East African, um, born in Uganda, but he's tribes from South Sudan. Mm. So I've got that East African energy. Yo, Might see me doing that like 1500. Energy, and then my mum's Republic of Ireland as yeah. well. So that's probably where I get my wild, my wildness from. Yo. But uh, give thanks. Your music, um, is the production on it, You, you. it seems to me like you go for quite a vo evocative... Uh, um, Tr tr uh, what's it called? Dissonant sounds. It's like I don't I don't know what you mean by that. Um, but what there's I'll... something like there's been some Excuse moments me. there's been some moments yeah. on the music where it feels like it qu quite can be quite melancholic in that you, yeah you've chosen a certain tone yeah. that really really yeah digs yeah. into your emotion yeah. yeah I like to get in there <laughs> right okay I get you now yeah I like to get in there. Um, I like people to heal with me. If people listen in there and I'm talking about certain issues or yeah. like with my last track, uh, Expectations, um, yeah, I'm talking about being like mixed heritage and possibly like post-colonial trauma from yeah. my parents or whatever, like um, from my dad's side. That's the ones with the strings and the whole... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, low section. yeah the strings. Yeah, See, yeah. that's a great example of what I'm talking about. Yeah, I got For what you real. meant. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just this epicness in that. Like, I don't always want to create music like that but i need to get these things that are in me out yeah um you know especially growing up in crawley it was quite a white area i've got people there that i love but at the same time i'd be on my own and be stopped by like bmp like yeah mm. we fought for you like and they're literally pulling out their bmp like fucking man i'm just like fuck off like fuck, you know come on, it's just the uh, like black amy was my name in crawley like mm. you know there you go akala akala used to come to crawley a lot as well his dad lives there that's how i, no I got way. to know him yeah no, yeah yeah like we used to play football at uh, bubish play center and whatnot in the wow. summer <laughs> but um nah 
just I think it's part of my healing journey to yeah. to talk about these things and also to express it for maybe other mixed heritage individuals or other human beings who mm. have gone through similar things. Because that's happening right now, but too yeah. many times. Isn't yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, mm. yeah. Lots yeah. of lots of things are being brushed under the carpet right now. But yeah, mm. but again, I do like being in the festival season. Bit, sorry, being at the festivals and seeing how I want more uplifting mm. music. It still mm. can be like you know driven or. There's just, this music's multi-dimensional and I want to make some more. I want to kind of come away from the like, miserably, mm. you know, because my energy has shifted mm. and uh, yeah, like I love the, I love hip hop. I'm not going to come away from hip hop, but I'm just going to be a bit more versatile, I guess. Versatility. Yeah, man. Yeah, but not a lot of people can do it. That's yeah. the thing, like what you're... Some people don't want to do it. Yeah, they don't. Do uh, it's like, a, sometimes it's a fear. It's like, oh, if I come away from this, then that's my identity mm. there. Like, we're multidimensional beings and that. You, you're, I don't like labels either, you know? It's like, we're forever growing and evolving, so move with it. You know, what's interesting though about you is that your peers really dig you. Like, you're kind of critic's choice. It's for, for, from, from an outside looking in, when people, when our scene... Yeah, yes. You say, Amy, yes. true, like... Yes. Even the most hardcore of hardcore, <laughs> yeah. they're just like, yeah, 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 fucking right. Yeah, yeah I probably go, I don't fuck about, do I? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I get shit done, I care for the people, like, yeah. And I've done a lot of traveling as well. Like, we'll go to India, the Philippines. I've done like workshops are doing like Belfast of John Zoo, big up John Zoo. Like John Zoo. Yeah, man. Like, working with Catholics and Protestants. Like, I just, I guess what I talk about, I actually do it and I believe in it and I go out mm. there and I do it. When we travel to other countries, like me and Snuff in Uganda and Logic and take my musicians with me, we always People's work... Army. People's Army. We always work on the grassroots with grassroots communities. Mm. I really believe that we need to connect more with other grassroots mm. artists who do similar things in different parts of the world. For me, especially after lockdown and they're trying to shut down things, yeah. I really want to connect more with like people on their sovereignty, mm. you know, people that own land, people that can, like, continue um, continue being active even if uh, the so-called powers that be want to shut everyone down and make you perform in, like, a, a plastic bubble at a festival. Yeah. yeah. Nah, mate. Nah. <laughs> it's nah, nah, nah. It's quite... You know, when you it's come to think happening. about it, it's quite scary times, isn't it? At the same time as being exciting. It's exciting for me. I'm yeah. not really scared. Like, I know, maybe this. I don't know, maybe there's something in my trauma that makes me not afraid of these things. Yeah, but like I'm it, more afraid of the stalker than I am of New World Order. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, <I> no. <laughs> Hope you're listening out there. Yeah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, on the real, though, uh, yeah. it's re repositioning your, your, your mind state and yeah. keeping everything... With a positive slant. Yeah. Um, and it's easy said, doesn't it, depending on the circumstances and who you are and yeah. what you're doing. Well, we all go through mm. all emotions, mm. don't we? But um, what, what drives you, where you're going, what's mm. your vision, what mm. do you want it for, you know, what's your integrity, all these things mm. you need to think about. Some people don't give a fuck. Mm. I'm just doing it. Cool, then just do it. Just Everyone do it. is different, man. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. Talk to me about the album. The Talk album. Because, we, you know, we're still, you know, working through it now, but we can have a little chat about yeah, it. Yeah, so f I have been working on it for, like, three years, but, again, I, I was a bit stunted, so I'll yeah. come back to it. It's You're like going to have, like, the best album with all this influence, man. <laughs> three years worth of all sorts of this business. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, I got, like, I got supported by R.A., the rugged man. He did a little shout-out for me. Chuck D, like, love to them guys. They're always, like, um, bigging me up and supporting me. And, yeah, man, um... Yeah, I'm working with some musicians, as always. Anyone who I'm working with on the album, as ever, is because I respect their energy mm. and I want us to combine that energy. Um, some people are like, no, I don't want anyone on my album. Like, it's a clout thing or da da da. Just, no, nah, it's never a clout thing. It's because I respect their energy, like, whether it's a musician, another artist, the designer, mm. whoever mix and masters mm. it, like Forrest DLG, Big Him Up, okay. or formerly known as Chemo. Good yeah, chemo. yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I follow my instincts a lot. Mm. I'm very instinctual. Like, if it feels good, move with it, you know? Like, yeah. we're magnetic, so... That's really important to, to, to factor in as well, isn't it? Because some people go against that that urge, that, that what it feels natural to them. Yeah, you know? because you, I guess you have the kind of anxiety and pressures of what mainstream is putting mm. in your face. And again, back to social media, can make people feel like their journey isn't they can't follow their authentic journey mm. because they're looking too much at what someone else is doing. Yeah. 
Yeah. Authenticity is so important. It's oh, so man, important. Because you'll have a you'll have a fan base for whoever you are. Yeah. There's so many people in the world, like, don't feel that you have to stick to something to follow the Yeah. Whatever you think you need to follow. Like, you know, it's mad you say that because there's been more recent on the podcast, like Grime or drum and bass MCs that well or who were them but had that calling of now nah, I'm gonna rap you know, hip hop. Yeah. But they'd started in that place. Yeah, they and started in hip hop, go drum and bass yeah. or drum and bass to hip hop. Shout out Inja as well. Yeah, Inja's doing know, a collaboration Inja, with him. Inja. Yeah, he's absolutely smashing it. He's like the happiest human. He is, planet. man. We did workshops like before he like obviously he's always been dope and that, but before he kind of took off more, we was doing workshops. He's, rollers, yeah. yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, he's a great good guy. Good people. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cambridge crew. Yeah, 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 that's right. And Kasha Ray as well. We worked yeah. with Harry, yeah. Harry Shotter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Big up them lot. Sub 10 was a grime MC, MC big up Sub 10, who, who then went into drum and bass. Mm. Um, and he said, he was like, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even know what drum and bass was. Yeah. Until I heard it for the first time, I was like, yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah. That's mad. That's I mad swear. that someone in grime didn't know drum and bass like that. Yeah, I love it. Like, the fast pace as well. I think a lot of people who would be diagnosed as ADHD. Again, I don't like these labels, but drum and bass, it makes people feel calm. <laughs> it's so fast. Like, if, you're, if your frequency is at yeah. a certain frequency, it, people feel so calm in that. Like, in that energy, the, the, the pace of drum and bass. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? But now you just made me think, well, you know, the, the, the anxiety of being on the phone and stuff. Yeah. Drum and bass is the one. It's yeah. The, it's the solution to that, like you say, yeah. anxiety, ADHD, did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. We're all resonating at different frequencies, isn't yeah. it? So More I than ever, it. man. It's yeah. just, it bon you know, the amount of times in a day I turn and I said, what the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> but they don't know neither. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly, man. No. Times are changing, but you're evolving, my dear. We all are, hopefully. Yeah, if you man. want to, you can evolve, innit? Yeah. It's, it's free, like. Yeah, it's yeah, free. yeah. Upgrades nothing, are nothing. free. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Time has flown. Respect. Big it up. Thank yeah. you, killer. Thank you, love. Salute. It's a German killer killer podcast. Out like it was out of fashion, you know. You know, it's not like the normals. It's a different kind of podcast, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, all right? Crumb don't pay neither today. You stay lucky, people. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> if I ran with